Now the Zycon 5000 is a bit different when you make a paper change. You can see that inside here, instead of that nice uh, roller that you, you have this nut that you turn here with your fingers, uh, you can see me, and it'll loosen and uh, open and shut the, uh, the gate here to let the paper smoothly through. Uh, but uh, it's a lot tougher to reach in and get this one to open it up uh, for the, uh, the paper to come through. So what I do is, uh, once I've made my splice here, across the roll, this machine is so much different, I, uh, I put it into auto, uh, and then I set it up to start, which it will do when I go back to the machine, and then I will go ahead and send the splice through, and it will come through our paper handler, like that five. The paper handler inside here like this, all these belts feed the piece of paper out and down into the catch tray and I'm unsure what I left off with so I'll be finding out in a minute what uh, I get to come out of here. I'm going to set it up for you guys to see the splice come through. So I come over here to my print medium, try to get it so that you guys can see it. Uh, and then I just uh, set it up so that I change print medium. And then I start the procedure, and I'm going to keep existing print medium here. And then I'm going to go ahead and say do it. Done. Done. And then I'm going to send it through. Feed the web, see? And once I hit this, the paper splice will head through the machine. Now what I'm hoping for is that there'll be no paper jam at the front of the Hunkler unloader uh, set up, uh, I don't know, we're going to see if there's going to be any kind of an issue with it feeding through, and I'm going to go back and, uh, and open the gate back and forth to see if I can get it to come through uh, with no hassles here. So off we go. Set the camera here so that you guys can see the paper feed it out. I'm going to go back and move it. Yeah, and as you can see, what I'm looking to have happen is my splice to come out of here in a couple seconds. Looks like I've got it clean through the back. No problem. Let's check and find out. Yeah, and what I'm looking to have happen up here is to see my piece of tape come through and know that I've made it all the way through my splice. Yeah, this machine is amazing when it's all set up nice. I'll show you a piece of paper coming through that apparatus back here so you can see better how it comes flying through there. Neat, huh? The way those rollers grab it. So awesome. This is a much better way to have your uh, your output uh, put through than what I have over there. You know? But this is, uh, this is way expensive. You can even direct it to uh, drop the stuff down into the bottom. And you can see, there's my splice. And it cut it right on my tape. Which is you know, you never know what you're going to get when that happens, but they cut it right here on this tape as well. You can see it just chopped right through the tape job that I did in my uh, 
my double-sided sticky tape, but success, this place is through. I'll show you guys how to line it up now. Now that you've made your paper change, you grab yourself a universal test uh, print here, and you launch it, and it'll come over to the other PC uh, on this side here. I'll launch it with a trial. And the reason we do this is that, uh, you see it comes over here to this side, the paper will get knocked out, uh, it'll knock everything out of alignment if you don't uh, run one of these, you'll, you might notice that you're way out of alignment after a paper change in particular. So I just hit the start, yep. and then I'm going to see it fill up the window here with uh, how many it's going to do right in a row, you know, just a bunch. And then I'm going to head over and it'll kick out a lot of blank prints, but what I'm looking to do is grab one out of here when it's done. and. Uh, Go ahead and line it up over there with the uh, crosshairs. I'm going to set this down for a little bit here and watch it come out until it gets to be a universal test print. Come back to that. Sometimes the first piece of paper will ram into the paper handler and you'll have to give it a wiggle to get it to start. So you can see that it's about to go. You notice that a lot of times the lag in between you sending off a job is warming up the fuser. Uh, takes a little bit of time. You can see the fuser is up 91%. Once it says it's ready, it'll usually start spewing out papers pretty fast. And what you're mostly looking for is, you know, that it doesn't jam up here. Uh, sometimes it'll ram right into there and you got to wiggle it, you know. But it seems to be coming out pretty good here through the paper handler. I'm going to set this down until I get a universal, then I'll show you guys what they look like. And if it stays lined up or not. up in the window up there sometimes you can see the, uh, the job heading towards you ahead of time but a lot of times the windows aren't to see through so you don't have a light on anymore. And I'm looking for a universal eventually. It does uh, take a while to warm up the print medium especially when you just changed it and you haven't had it acclimated from uh, one area to the next. Since you know you're going to be making an adjustment or two, go ahead and set yourself up over here with adjust color registration. And then you're going to be moving these sliders around to get uh, what you need. Got a top roller out of alignment there. Yeah, these will be the sliders that you're moving around once we get our crosshairs lined up. There's the test. I see I do have a dot in the flag. I'll have to go in and fix that if it doesn't knock out of its own way. Anyway, I grab one of these babies out of there, head over here quick and look at it. What you're looking to do, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but you're looking to see through this down into the line up uh, each thing as you go. Uh, this looks like it's reasonably aligned anyway, but uh, we'll find out in a second here what, uh, what I might change. But I'm good, glad you can see that through the loop. And uh, let me set it up here for a second. I have good solid crosshairs. Everything seems nice. I'm not going to adjust anything. Uh, it seemed to stay in uh, alignment the whole time, so that is good news. But if you were to want to adjust anything, if you notice any of the bars are out of whack or whatever, you make your movements here. And then you hit apply down here. But in this case, I really don't need to change anything. I'm surprised, but it's, uh, it went from one medium to the same exact medium. So, you know, it didn't knock it out of whack at all. Good thing.
And that's how you change around the 5,000. A little bit different procedure, uh, nothing, you know, special, but, uh, you know, a little different. Figured I'd show you guys. Thanks for watching.